Iowa quite a bit. Uh, it's been some time. Uh, you've gained a little bit more traction here in Iowa than in the national polls. What, what do you att uh, attribute that to? Well, I think it's just people get to see you. You get to talk to people. They hear your message. Number one thing I get from people is after I go do a spiel, they'll be like, oh, yeah, I'm for you, man. You were really good. Like, so they know I'm a governor. They know I've done a good job. You know, they have favorable view, but then when they see what's your vision and how you articulate it, it makes a big difference. And, yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, a national poll usually won't even have anyone in Iowa in it at all. That's not, it's not a national race. It's a state-by-state -state race. So we're going to be spending our time in the early states, uh, Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina. We understand that's the way you do it. And the good thing is, Iowans really expect that too. I mean, you know, they don't care what the national things are. They want to see the candidates. They want to see you make the case, and they want to see you ask for uh, ask them for your vote. So that's what we're doing. With uh, a lot of your day one promises you just mentioned had to do with a lot of social and cultural issues. Um, it seems like a, a winning strategy for the Republican primary. Is it a winning strategy in the general? Well, I think our, our uh, agenda is really, really broad. I mean, I think, you know, we spend most of our time talking about the economy. Uh, we spend most of the time talking about our uh, economic independence agenda, where we're not dependent on China and where the middle class isn't getting crushed uh, by bad policies out of D.C. I mean, right now, you're trying to raise a family. You're working hard. You're doing everything right. As a middle class family, it's hard to afford a house. It's hard to afford a car. And then the cost of all the necessities have gone through the roof. And so if the economy doesn't work for those people, this country cannot be successful. And so that'll be a day one priority. And we've outlined a number of steps we can do to, to get the economy back to where you know, the American dream is with, within reach of the average citizen again. In terms of ter terminating a lot of people at the top of the FBI, are you concerned that such an act by a president, be it you or someone else, could turn that into a, an every four-year thing where a Democrat or Republicans coming in and changing the top of the FBI? Well, here's the thing. Uh, the culture... The, the, the agency's lost its way. I mean, when they're indulging and in, uh, surveilling parents going to school board meetings, when they're doing this thing with the traditional Catholics, uh, when they've done, I mean, I was on the congressional baseball team when we had the deranged gunmen. And this guy was a political leftist activist who hated Republicans. And he targeted the players because they were Republicans. And yet the FBI said that was suicide by cop. They didn't admit it was politically motivated for like three or four years. So when you see that, uh, you cannot be successful in that. And so what we'll do is we're going to restore the rule of law while the single standard of justice. We are going to take a lot of those agencies and offices out of D.C. Because I think what's happened, uh, the D.C. politics has really corrupted uh, a lot of stuff. And you got to get it out in the rest of the country. So, you know, there may be a part of the FBI ends up in Iowa. I mean, who knows? But we are very sensitive uh, to the, the negative impacts of having power accumulate in Washington. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.